All right, you guys. Well, good morning and welcome to our third week of our leadership call series. This is Carla Sandoval calling here from Los Angeles. This is exactly 9 a.m., so we're going to get started with the call. Uh, I have so much to share with you guys today. You know, I had a, an amazing weekend. I had the opportunity of going up north, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that during the call because it's going to be really relevant to the subject that we're covering today. Um, so just for those of you who are on the call for the first time or maybe you were on the call with us in the beginning, I want to just do a really quick two-minute recap because every call that we're doing throughout the month, it's building on each other, okay? So the first week that we've been, you know, that we started talking about this concept of leadership at the beginning of, of November was we started to really look at what are the characteristics of a leader and what has to be in place for like, the leadership to come out, right? And one of the things we started talking about the first week of the call was that one of the things that a leader really, it's in order for a leader to be able to bring out the best of its people and to bring out the best characteristics and the, the most powerful um, parts of a human being, there's a couple of things that must be in place. And we started building on this foundation that one of the things that has to be in place in order for human beings or for a team to bring out the best of themselves are two things. Number one, the team and people must feel safe within the environment. In other words, they must feel like they can trust one another. And if you start thinking about this, it's not like rocket science, right? But I think sometimes we forget, and I include myself, sometimes we forget that in order for people to really show up, like to their maximum potential, or you can even take this out to like a client. If you really want a client to really you know, be loyal and completely engage with your products and your services, the way to do that and the way to have that happen is for them to totally and completely trust you. To know that you as their leader, if they're a client or if it's a team, you as their leader have the ability to be able to set an environment of safety that they know that they can count on one another. We use the example of a military person that went out and got the bodies that were left, you know, from, from being out in the war and bodies that were left being killed and things like that. And they went out and got the bodies. And when they interviewed them, they asked them, why did you do it? And they were like, well, I know that they would do the same thing for me. So the first week we really talked about the fact that in order for the team to be able to bring out the best of themselves is that they must feel that they can trust the leader. They must feel like, hey, I feel safe around them. And I can come to them and let them know, hey, you know what, I really messed up, and they're not going to, like, whip me, right? <laughs> um, and the second thing is there must be collaboration. So if there is collaboration among the team, the best of themselves will come out because they're no longer feeling afraid. They're no longer having anxiety, like, oh, my gosh, can I trust you? Will you help me if I help you? And that doesn't exist when there's trust and collaboration. So that was the first week we really built on that. And I really asked you guys, and I did this too, by the way. You know, I actually took the homework on and uh, started to look at, and I asked for you guys to do the same, to look at how, as far as the environment that you're setting forth with your leadership, do the people around you, do they trust you? Do they feel safe? And are you building up an environment of collaboration? And I have to say, you know, like I said on these calls, I'm not afraid of admitting and sharing with you guys my goods and my bads, the good and ugly kind of thing, right? And I got to tell you, you know, I got some work to do. And here's the thing. As long as we are honest with ourselves, and that's like really been the foundation of these calls, is having self-awareness to really be mindful because everything just comes from a mindset. Like you really being responsible as far as from where you're at. And being honest, like, hey, this is where I'm at, and it's not right, it's not wrong, but it's to be able to then move forward. See, you can't fix something if you don't know that it's broken. Now, that's just like a, to say, but here, we're, we're, we as human beings are never broken. We're perfect just the way we are. However, there are things that work in our lives, and there are things that don't work for what we want to accomplish. Okay? So, for example, you know, if you want to build up an environment of, of collaboration, what would work is to, is to be the type of person that allows collaboration to show up. What wouldn't work is to be a grouch and, you know, hostile and rude and mean, you know. So it, it, 
not, it's not whether it's right or wrong. It's just what works and what doesn't work in a cor- according to what it is that you want to create. So that was the first week. The second week, we started to look at really, 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 what are the values, what is your passion, and what is your purpose? And we started to dig into what drives you. Like, really, really, what drives you? Like, what is it that, you know, that would have you be, what kind of business do you want to create? What kind of organization do you want to start to develop? And we started to look at, you know, and I asked for you guys to really ponder about, about being self-aware of what is it that you really want? What really fulfills you? Like, really, really, you know, if you want to build a team and you want to have trust and you want to have them feel safe and you want them to collaborate, it would help if the leader knows what they want to create. Okay, so I started to ask you guys to ponder upon the question of what drives you last week, okay? What, what drives you as far as your passion, your values, and your purpose? Like, what do you want your life to be about? And that was last week's call. And why we did that was to get to this week's call, okay, which is we're going to start looking at now that you have this idea of what it is that, that drives you, what would that look like? So this week's call is about your vision will provide the pathway, okay? So I'm going to actually read a little bit um, on some interviews that people did on great leaders such as Walt Disney, people that created amazing companies such as IBM. You know, I know Apple right now is like the trend, right? There was a time that IBM was the company, right? So they interviewed these, these great leaders, and they started asking them, how did they create this massive company? How did they create this massive vision, right? So one of the things that they started to do, and it's, it's like to really be intentional, and that's like the key word, okay, to be intentional about describing exactly, I mean, exactly how you want your business to be. Okay, when it's fully developed, when you get to that that goal, whatever your goal is, okay, whether it's, well, actually, it's not even just for your business, really, it's for anything in life. Like, even if it's for, like, your body, your relationship, your spirituality, your business, whatever your goal is, okay, it just so happens that we're talking about business here on these calls, but you can apply this to anything. So let, I'm just going to take for business for an example, okay? But when it's fully developed, when your business is like, yes, this is exactly where I want to go, when it's all said and done, how will it look? Okay? And you can, look, you can apply this to your, to your body, for example. When you say, okay, I want to have this goal for my body. Okay, well, when it's all said and done, how would it look? Okay? So you want to start looking at that. And here's the thing. A lot of you guys on the call might be barely starting to build your business. So you have um, an advantage, I guess you could say, because you perhaps you're like a baby, right? So we can start like writing your story. So you want to start looking at if you're just starting your business, okay, when I have, when I get to this level, when I accomplish X, Y, Z, I want it to look like this. I want to have this type of team. I want to have this type of atmosphere. I want to have this type of, um, of environment. I want my team to look like this. I want them to get along like this. These are the type of people that I want to attract to my business. Listen, yesterday I was um, coming back from the Bay Area, and I took the Amtrak, so I have five full hours on the train. I started to do this exercise, okay? And I'll give you guys the steps, or I'll actually put it on my um, website. By the way, I, I took off the lock of the call series. Um, people got all confused. I took them off. But so now you can access all the calls without having to log in. Um, and I'll put it on there. But I started to do this yesterday. And I was, like, fascinated. I started to write down what, what – actually, you know what? I'll give you guys a step now. The first thing I did was start to look at what don't you want. So I started putting I don't want. <laughs> I started making a list of what I do not want my business to look like what I do not want my life to be, what I do not want to happen, what type of people I don't want to attract into my life nor to my business. And I started to make a list of the things I don't want. Then I started to make a list of what I do want. The, oh, I do want, you know, for example, one of the things I said, I don't want to babysit people, right? And so one of the things that I do want is I want to work with people that are up to big things. And so I started making a list. I want a business, blah, blah, blah. I want it to look like this. I want to have a team like that. 
I want my life to be like this. I started to write a whole list of things that I do want. Now, you might be wondering, why did you put the things you don't want first? Because guess what? Those are the things that are in the back of your mind that many times we don't even, like, want to acknowledge, but they're there. And many times the reason why we get paralyzed, like, to not move forward is because it's the things that we don't want that are totally at the forefront of our mind. At least I'll speak for myself. You know, I sometimes, okay, yes, me too, okay, I sometimes focus more on what I don't want than what I do want. The problem with that is that whatever you focus on is what you get. So by me just writing down what I don't want, I just got it out of my mind, like there, that's what I don't want. It was like detox for my head. Then I started to write down everything I did want. I started to write down one thing after another, after another, after another. And I got to tell you, by the end, I was like really excited. I'm like, oh, my God, this is really great, right? Because I know that I can have it. The thing is, a lot of the times we know what we want, we just don't know how to, we don't know how to express it. We don't know how to verbalize it. So for those of us who have been in the business for a while and have, have had businesses for a while or, or maybe have been trying to do something, whether it's your body or your relationships, and you've really been working at something for a while, I also have some great news for you. See, you can really gain, regain the fresh energy of a new business by doing these exercises. Especially, you kind of have a little bit more of an advantage than those who are just starting because you've done the business for a while. So by now, you have an idea of what you really don't want, what kind of people you really don't want to work with, and you have an idea of what you do want. There's been times in your life and in your business where you're excited and you're, like, pumped up, you know. I started to write those things down. I'm like, oh, my God, I really got excited. Like, I really got this, like, I don't know how to describe it, but in the train, I was like, all pumped, you know? So I want you to start, I want, well, I encourage you to start doing that exercise, to start really getting clear as far as what you want and what you don't want. And, you know, it's amazing because when you do that, when you reimagine your business, it's the first concrete step towards that entrepreneur dream, okay? And I say entrepreneur dream because we're talking about business, but really it could be your first step for your whatever dream. Okay. Now, here's the thing: when you've done when you've done this, not that not not that you've done it right, but when you do it like really authentically, where you put some time aside, you're not just doing it like you know while you're watching TV. Like you know, I was on the train; I had nobody, no distraction. But when you do it right, and you really create a vision of what what kind of business you want to create, and what kind of people, what how you want to feel, you really can have like a template. Now, here's the thing: when you have this of how your company will look and how it will act when it's fully developed, it really, like, becomes a blueprint for your business and your life, okay? So when they started, so I started, like, researching a couple of people. As you know, I love watching documentaries, okay? I love watching successful interviews. I just, you know, just, I love to see what kind of mindset somebody has who's created abundance. So I watched the interview of the guy who – um Tom Watson, the uh, the founder of IBM. So they started to ask him, you know, what was it? You know, and like what kind of, you know, what brought his vision to life? And um, and he said, you know, my decisions and the strategy depended on it. And so I was like, okay, I'm really going to listen, right? Because this is like, I was like, this is so perfect. It's going to be perfect for my call tomorrow. So here's what they said. I'm going to actually read because I wrote down what he said, okay? And he said, the first reason is that at the very beginning, I had, very, I had a very clear picture of what the company would look like when it was fully done. Exactly what we're talking about, right? Like he had a clear picture of what the company would look like, the culture, the people, everything. And he said, you might say I had a model in my mind of what it would look like when the dream, my vision, was in place. And guess what? Walt Disney said the exact same thing. See, Walt Disney died before Disney ever, Disneyland was ever created. And someone said, God, I wish that Walt was been here to see this. And someone said, because he saw it is why now you can see it. Right? So these leaders, they see it before it happens. And then he said, number two, my second reason was that once I had the picture, right, once he knew how the company was going to look, and I, this is my favorite part, okay, I asked myself how a company 
which looked that way would act. How would a company which looked that way would act? So if you think about it, he started looking at, okay, so if I had this company, what kind of people would work inside that company? If I had this vision, what kind of people would I need to attract in order to fulfill upon that vision? And then he said, the third reason IBM had been so successful was that once I had the picture of how the company would look when the dream was all in place and how, and how such a company would have to act, I realized that unless we began to act that way from the beginning, we would never get there, right? And that's one of the advantages of the people that are just starting the business, right? So once you have a vision of what the company looks like and you start looking at what kind of people would, have, would, would be inside that company, how would they act, right, to start putting that into place from the beginning. Now, for those of us who already have a business and we are like perhaps reimagining it, because I read this and I'm like, oh, am I doomed or what, you know? But no, but here's the thing. Right? We have an opportunity from this day forward, right, to reimagine our company. If we wanted to take our business, our company, our bodies, whatever it is that you want to take to the next level, how would that look? Then how would you act or what kind of people would be inside that company in order to fulfill upon that vision? And then start doing that from today. Right? Start doing that now. Not tomorrow, but start taking the actions and start you know, acting that way from the beginning. And if we already started, you know, and we're like reimagining it, it's starting from today. Because every day really is a business, right? And then he said, I'll, I'll finish reading this. He said, from the very outset, IBM was fashioned after a template of my vision. And each and every day, we attempted to model the company after that template. At the end of each day, we asked ourselves how well we did discovered the disparity between where we were and where we had committed ourselves to be. And at the end of the following day, set out to make up for the difference. In other words, there was always a reflection of what are we doing? You know, are, we, are we aligned? And if we are, great. And if we're not, what will we do tomorrow to get ourselves realigned? So every night or every day, you could do this. Every night, you could take an, an, you know, an inventory. What did I do? Great. What could I better my what What could I do better tomorrow? And you know, I have a system, and I'll share with you guys. If you guys come to my office, I have this huge whiteboard, and my system is really elementary. Okay, at night I write down the, the night before. I write down everything I need to do the next day, even like wake up at such hour. Like I mean, I write down like wake up three five thirty, gym from six thirty to eight thirty. I'm like I write down everything down, right? And as I'm accomplishing things throughout the day, I'm crossing them off. And it's like this little victory every time I cross things off. So you can find a way to, you know, keep yourself on track and what's working, what's not working. And if you start doing this, you know, if you really start to get, you know, number one, get the vision, because that becomes your blueprint for what you want to create. And you really stay on track. Every time you make a decision, you ask yourself, is this, is this decision in alignment with my blueprint, with what I want? And if the answer is yes, great. And if the answer is no, well, then you have to rethink about making that, making a different decision or whether, you know, it's going to be adjusted or whatever the case may be, right? But without it, you will get along, like, every single day. I know when I don't have my little list, I'm like, what am I going to do today? And, like, my day, like, literally owns me rather than me owning my day. And then secondly is once you write down your vision, like, what you want, what you don't want, what kind of people you want in your business, if you write everything down, one of the most important questions you really can consider asking yourself is how do you and your team need to act every single day in order to realize that vision? So if it's for your body, for example, like if you have this vision of what you want your health and your body to look like, then the question is how do I need to act every single day in order to fulfill that vision? If your vision is for a team purpose, then you got to think about what would my team, right? How do we need to act in order to fulfill that team vision and purpose? So if you start looking at that, you know, and then thirdly, describe how, you know, how, once you describe how your team's going to act or how you're going to act, you've got to start putting that into practice immediately. Start taking those small little steps in order to create that. So my assignment to you guys this week is to do exactly that. Number one, Figure out what it, is that you, what it is that you want or you don't want. And you can even take my approach. List everything you don't want first just so that you get it out, right? And then 
write down everything you want. So what you're left with is what you want, that you got out, what you don't want, because it's there. I mean, for me to think that I don't have concerns of, oh, my God, I don't want to babysit people. No, it's there. So I just got out a piece of paper and I threw it up, and then I created what I did want. And the reason I'm telling you this is because if you really want to know, like if you look at leaders, such as with IBM or, you know, Walt Disney, you look at leaders and think, what is the difference? in people's lives and like what has them what has some people be the way they are and some not be the way they are right or like why why did some people follow through and why some people don't follow through if you look at that it really comes down to two things and this is all anthony robbins has said and i you know one of my favorite speakers and that is it's all up to them what is their must and what is their should like we really go after what we consider must not should. Like, I should lose some weight is one thing. But if you're like, oh, my gosh, my health is in danger. I've got a cholesterol, high blood pressure. I'm going to die. I must take care of my health. Now it becomes who you are. Like, it's like a must, not a, well, I should. Your brain doesn't take your should seriously. Okay? And here's the thing that I really got, you know, when I went, I went to Anthony Robbins' seminar I heard him say this, and I was like, oh, my God, it sounds so simple, but it really isn't, and that is if you want to have an extraordinary life, you must have an extraordinary psychology. In other words, the thoughts that are coming through your mind and, you know, with, with your vision and what you need to act, you've got to have an extraordinary psychology. Now, to have an extraordinary psychology, like to have a strong mindset, right, you must live in extraordinary state. You've got to be in, in an extraordinary state. Now, what the heck does that mean, right? Here's the thing. You can't be, like, crying and having an extraordinary psychology. If you're crying, you've got, you know, not such positive thoughts coming through your mind. Now, if you can put your body in state, this is why it's so important that we exercise every single day, not only to look good, but really to allow your body to be full of energy so that then – you can, you know, your body is like, I always say this, you know, your body is like a vessel for your life. And if you've got this vessel coming through of energy, guess what you're going to be having every single day? Tons of energy. But in other words, if you can allow yourself, or allow yourself to do something every single day to be physically strong, you are going to be, you're, you're, you'll have more of an opportunity to be in an extraordinary state, you know, of, of your body's going to be super fired up, therefore your thoughts are going to be a lot more fired up, okay? Therefore, you'll be able to have a better fired up life. So it really starts from your body to your mind to your action. But so many of us focus on what we need to do, what we need to do, but then we don't have the right energy. We get thinking, thinking, right? So let's start focusing on if you really want to have an extraordinary life, you've got to have an extraordinary psychology. And, and in order to have an extraordinary psychology, you've got to be in an extraordinary state. In other words, your body's got to be conditioned and trained, like at the nervous system level, to really focus and be its best. And we talked about this a couple of calls ago, um, the neuroscience calls that we did. And if not, you can go on entrepreneurintelligence.com. They're there. And that is that really it starts when well, you can rewire yourself, like really reprogram yourself at a nervous system level extraordinary things will happen, okay? So now if this is the case, like if we think of, well, why do some people do it and why some people don't, like Anthony Robbins said, it's really because we need to raise our standards, right? We've got to think, okay, if you're starting to look at your vision and you're starting to dream about kind of kind of business you want, if you're not raising your standards and if you're not having it stretch you, it's not, it might not excite you. Okay, it might not get you excited because you don't have a lot at stake. It might be like, well, like that, right? It's going to be like not energetic. So I encourage you that when you're starting to write your goals, really consider raising your standards because life will really pay you whatever you ask of it. Whatever you really tell your life, like this is what I want, here's the thing, you guys. Your mind, like I've told you a thousand, thousand times, right, your mind will never argue with you. It's never going to say, no, 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 you don't want that. You really want this. Your mind only serves you. It's a servant. It's like a servant mechanism, right? All it does is takes orders and fits that result. The question is, what kind of orders are you giving your brain? 
And here's the thing. If you ask for in, in, intelligently, like, in other words, you're specific about your, about your asking. You're very specific of what you want. You're very specific as far as what you don't want. Many times what you don't realize is that because you're not specific, you are getting what you want. They're just, you're just asking generally. So if you ask intelligently, like you really say, okay, this is exactly what I want. This is exactly the time I, I want. And maybe that little retarded voice will come in and go, no, you're really asking for a lot. Come on. Really? They don't exist. I'm telling you because when I was writing down what I want and what kind of people I want to work with, what kind of team I want to create, those voices came into my mind. I'm like, damn, you're really asking for a lot, Carla, right? But I had to check myself, like, okay, be quiet, little voice, right? Because it's there, that little fear of can it really happen is there. But the question is, are you going to listen to that or still push forward? And here's the thing. How you can get yourself to push forward is by really attaching emotion behind it. So if you're really specific as far as what what it is that you want and you ask yourself, why do I want this? And you start writing down all the reasons why you want what you want and you really put emotion with those reasons, anytime you have an obstacle or anytime you have like a little hiccup or problems because they're going to happen, you have a better chance of getting through to them. You have a better chance of overcoming them. But if we don't, and I'm telling you because I've experienced times in my life where I said I wanted something, but it really wasn't a must. It was more like a should. And I didn't really have clear why I wanted it. I was like, well, yeah, I think this would be kind of cool. Well, guess what? Anytime there was an obstacle, like that, my, 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 my goal was like left within a second because that obstacle became bigger than my reason. And that's what happens. Reasons come first. Actions come second. Okay, reasons come first, actions come second. So what I'm going to encourage you guys this week is to really get crystal clear on what it is that you want. Write it down and then circle two or three things. When you make that list, circle two or three things. And I would even encourage you, right, this is my, my next step for myself as well, is that now that I make that list, I gotta write a, I'm going to write a statement that describes those three things within that statement. Like, this is what it is. This is what I want. This is the kind of people I want to work with. And, like, make it into a statement that, that really moves me emotionally, that excites me. Okay, because when I, when I was writing the list, I was excited. But if I can put it down, like, in a statement where I can look at it day in and day out, it, you know, it's going to be more um, – you're going to start reprogramming your mind to start looking for that. Because here's the thing. There's actually something in your brain – that allows you to notice the things that you want to notice. You see, you notice only what you tell your brain to notice. In other words, there are hundreds of thousands of millions of things around you at every moment in time. But if your brain noticed everything, you would go crazy. So your brain only notices what it needs to notice. So if you're driving, for example, right, and you're driving on the freeway, and there's, like, a literally, like, hundreds of cars, on, you know, on both lanes. There's grocery stores, you know, on the side. You know, there's, there's signs of the gas station. There's all of this stuff. If you notice everything, you would go crazy. But you told your brain, okay, we're driving, so keep your eyes on the road. So your brain goes, all right, keep your eyes on the road, right? So here's the thing. Your brain is like those missiles, right? I love this example that Anthony Robbins says, that it's like the missile. You, it shoots at a target, and if the wind starts to blow, the missile will realign itself to stay on track to hit the target. Your brain is no different. So if you can get really clear as far as what it is that you want, you're clear on your goals, then your brain will know exactly what it needs to do in order to get it. Like, you need to have faith in that. Like, it knows from point A to point B, what will have you go there the fastest is to be crystal clear and to put power behind it. And how you put power behind it is by putting tons of emotions behind what it is that you want, okay? And any time that there are little things that come your way, your brain will readjust and find a way to get what it is that you want, what it, what it is that you're after. You know, and I know that you guys have experienced this at some point in your life. You said, I want this, and then you kind of forget about it or, or whatever, but you kept, like, thinking about it once in a while, and you started doing those goals, and all of a sudden, boom, it happened. You're like, oh, shoot, right? And then there's times, because it happens by accident, and then there's times where you're like, this is what I want, and you focus on it every single day. You put tons of emotion behind it, 
it will come to you, it will come into fruition a lot faster because you've got your eye, as they say, right, you got your eye on the ball. So in conclusion, the last 30 seconds that I have, I want you guys to really take this on this week. Really write down what it is that you want, what it is that you don't want. Create a statement of what you want and really get crystal clear as much as you possibly can because clarity is power, okay? And when you know what you want, and you can make a list of what you want for your business, what you want for your body, what you want spiritually, and what you want for your relationships, okay? And when you do this, you're clear on your goals, you will, I mean, just watch, you will start noticing things that you never noticed before. You will start looking at things that you perhaps never even looked at. Ideas will come to you that you, you're like, where did that come from? Because your brain has literally been ordered to deliver on those desires, especially if you put a lot of emotion behind it. So it's 9.30 exactly, so hold on. I'm going to um, stop the recording and open up the lines in case anybody has any questions or any comments. One second.